Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be here this morning. And uh, indeed, I think it's about men. So uh, I would have hoped to see more men because I see mostly women. But uh, I hope the message comes through to men uh, through whatever you're transmitting. But uh, let me explain why. Um, when Patricia asked me, uh, I wouldn't be honest uh, if I didn't say that I did hesitate. I have never done this before. Uh, I've never spoken about uh, gender equality in this forum. I have in others, so I did hesitate, otherwise I wouldn't be honest. I asked myself two questions. Is this an important issue? Uh, and obviously that answer is easily uh, yes, uh, because it's a question of fundamental human rights, and uh, human rights are fundamental to everyone. Uh, I like to see human rights in a kind of trilogy, trilogy. You have economic rights, you have security, and you have human rights in the traditional sense. But I see a hierarchy, actually. I see no security without development. If there is no development and if everyone is poor, you will have conflict. And you have no development without security. If there's fighting going on, you will have no development. But I think the point I'd like to make is that there is no human rights, or there is, sorry, there is no security nor development without human rights. So human rights actually is an overarching value of importance. And women's rights are a fundamental pillar of human rights, together with the abolition of torture, the abolition of the death penalty, and other issues that make human rights so fundamental to all of us. So human rights are important, and therefore women's rights, which are a pillar of human rights. So I had no hesitation to say this is a, a very important issue. The second uh, question I asked myself uh, is, uh, do I have something to say? Uh, well, I come from the Netherlands. Uh, I know I'm not allowed to make any publicity uh, here, but I'm allowed to say where I'm from, and I'm proud to be from the Netherlands. <laughs> the Netherlands is a country which debates issues openly. We uh, are an open society. We don't hide issues. We debate them openly. And the position of women has been on the political agenda for uh, many, many years. Uh, I come uh, from uh, the Netherlands, so that made me what I... I work for the Netherlands government. Uh, the Netherlands government has, for many decades, puts women's rights at the forefront of its agenda. And we put our money where our mouth is, uh, or our mouth where our money is, I'm not sure which one it is. <laughs> I work at the Netherlands Embassy, and this is not an accomplishment of mine, but my predecessors, we have uh, 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 at the Embassy, fully three quarters of Japanese local staff are female, and we have an exact 50-50 balance for expat diplomats from the Netherlands. And the six women diplomats who work at the Netherlands Embassy, they all have a husband or partner who looks after the family. So there is really a huge change over the last 30 years. Uh, a full balance in expats and 75% uh, uh, female of local staff. We're actually looking at redressing that balance in some departments which are only female. So I answered that question very easily. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Let me say a few things about the Netherlands. Have we made progress? Uh, I, think, I think we have. Sorry about this. Uh, I think we have. Uh, we have an emancipation monitor in the Netherlands which measures progress. Uh, and I think that's an important point. Accountability is important. You need benchmarks, you need to set targets, and you need to measure what is going right and what is going wrong. And you need to hold people and institutions accountable. Uh, we've had a mixed picture in the Netherlands. There's still a long way to go. Uh, we have positive news in the sense that uh, women are now in the younger women are better educated than uh, uh, men. So they are getting their diplomas more quickly and more often. And so they're doing better in schools. In the age group of 24 to 65, men are just, uh, just better educated than women, but women are catching up uh, very fast indeed. On the downside, of course, we have a long way to go. Economic independence of women in the Netherlands is still substantially lower than men. Uh, and we men uh, are still earning more on average than women, which is a bad thing. In rankings, uh, although we think we are making progress, let me just quote a newspaper uh, last week which uh, measures influential people in the Netherlands. And they measured the 100 top influential people in the Netherlands. And in the top 10, there was one woman. And you may have guessed it, on number 10. So that is not good enough. There was also a ranking 
of the best cooks in the Netherlands, and to my amazement, the top 20, there's not a single woman uh, who is good. And I thought that women cooked very well indeed. So there is, a, in rankings, still a long, very long way to go. So that is about the Netherlands, but the trend is clear. We are making better use of female talent all the time. The breadwinner model in the Netherlands is virtually uh, not popular any longer with younger generations. Everyone wants to have both partners full-time work, or one part-time, full-time, or both part-time. Labor laws facilitate this process. So that's what the situation is. What should we conclude? Women have talent, they're educated, but they're not doing as well as men. So what is the conclusion? My conclusion is, this world is ruled by men. We need to approach men, and uh, attitudes with men need to change, because they are the ones who need to facilitate and give opportunities to women, because they pull the strings. Open a newspaper, and I think you will have no difficulty in seeing mostly men in politics, men in corporations, men who are pulling the strict strings, men ruling the world. So it is actually the attitude of men which is the fastest way to pursue the agenda of uh, gender equality. Uh, this made me think of Maya Angelou, the famous American poet and uh, writer. I hope I pronounce her name correctly. Uh, I saw a quote in one of our policy papers saying that uh, she said that uh, uh, every time a woman sticks up for herself, every time a woman stands up for herself, she's standing up for all women in the world. But that's only part of the story. And I said to myself, if I'm right, that it's about men, she's missing the point. And I thought of an analogy, and I thought of soccer. Soccer is a men's game, and uh, I know there are places in the world where women are not allowed to watch soccer games. This is a, not far-fetched, this happens. And I thought to myself, if you take this analogy of Maya Angelou, uh, and you have women at the gate of the stadium asking to go in, asking to watch the game, and why shouldn't they? Uh, it's not good enough to simply tell these women, stick up for yourself, you're doing a good job, yeah, you should be able to go in and uh, defend yourself uh, and make your way in. That's not good enough. The only way they're ever going to see a match is when the men who go to the stadium allow them to, and when the men who run the stadium allow them to, and when the politicians in that country allow women into the stadium. It's not the women banging on the door saying that they should come in and stick up for themselves that it will happen. Let me just mention a few points uh, that I'd like to make. Uh, the puzzle of gender equality. One, men and women are equal. Yes, men and women are equal. But are they the same? Obviously not. That might be politically correct to say, but men and women have different qualities. Women have strengths men don't have, and men have strengths women don't have. And the whole point is to put it together and make it work in, in, in diversity. That's my second point. Diversity is a value in itself. Uh, when we look at biodiversity, we look at the, the disappearing white rhino or the Bengal tiger, tiger. Does it really matter if the Bengal tiger would disappear? It ma matters from a moral point of view. And that's why diversity is a value in itself to be pursued. And uh, that uh, is I, what I believe is very true because it also means that one plus one is three. Uh, and this is not a zero-sum game. Gender equality is about making one plus one three. It is defining the laws of mathematics. My fourth point, freedom. I think freedom is essential. Uh, and I have to say here also, coming from the Netherlands, this is, and for many other people around the world, fundamental, individual choice, individual freedom of conscience. Actually, our war of independence against Spain four and a half centuries ago was about independence. But it was as much about the freedom of conscience, the freedom not to be Catholic, to be Protestant, or to be nothing at all. And it is no coincidence that individual freedom brought this explosion of culture and arts in the Netherlands in what we call our golden age, and why so many minorities who were persecuted in the rest of Europe came to the Netherlands. Individual freedom is fundamental, and it should be fundamental for also women, and they should have the equal freedom as men. And it is because we have this history, uh, uh, surprising to me that we have not made even more progress in the Netherlands on the issue of gender equality, because individual freedoms are so important for us. Then there is the question of work-life balance. 
Work-life balance is the fifth piece of the puzzle, extremely important. Uh, it also has to, everything to do with freedom of choice, the freedom of the man or the woman or the couple to decide what work-life balance they will have. And if one person has more work-life balance, you will see the other partner in a couple will also have more work-life balance, and this is freedom. Economics, very important point, sixth point I'd like to make. Uh, it makes micro sense. There are companies, there are studies that say that more gender parity and more gender equality uh, actually increases the results of a company. And you wonder why the men who run companies aren't listening and aren't just simply following economic instincts, which you would imagine them to do, uh, and say this makes economic sense to have more gender equality within our company. Then there is inclusiveness. There are many problems in society, and gender should be part of so problem solving of every problem in society. Then there is accountability, I mentioned, and I think accountability, measuring, uh, making benchmarks, uh, making sure you are making progress, and holding people and institutions accountable when there is none is vital. So, um, after these points, snakes and ladders, your theme. Uh, your guardian is apparently the snake. I would have hoped the ladder would be your guardian, but uh, the snake and ladders. I think it's uh, fair to say that women have snakes and ladders, but I think that uh, this is true for men as well, except our ladders are probably longer and our snakes shorter. And I think, therefore, it is for men to make sure that women get the ladders they deserve and, and, and uh, avoid the snakes that they, don't, uh, that they shouldn't fall down. Uh, so snakes and ladders is a good analogy, but I think it goes for everyone. And I think it is up to men, because they run this world, uh, if you look around you, and I'm generalizing, but that is the case. Uh, I think that it is for men to provide those ladders and provide the opportunities for women to make headway in life. So my conclusion, uh, I hope you've got the message by now, is that uh, men pull the strings in this world, so they need to change attitudes, they need to make the possibilities for women to uh, pursue their careers uh, and pursue their life as they want and have as much freedom of choice as men. How to do this? This is a difficult question. Changing attitudes takes a long time, but if I can make one practical suggestion, role models are important. Work on men which can provide the example. The men who lead this uh, uh, country or any country in the world with vision and leadership on this issue, they should be the ones to introduce uh, change. And if I can mention three examples, I was once in a country where there were elections and there was a big issue about human rights and women's rights. And there were, I was speaking with the chairman of the election commission and he was worried that women were not turning out for the vote. So I suggested to him, you know what you should do? You should advise your president the day before polling to go with all the media in the country and hold hands with his wife, walk up to the ballot box, and ask her to drop in the, her vo uh, vote as first in front of the media, and then turn around to the cameras and call on all her fellow women in the country to cast their vote tomorrow, and not necessarily on her husband. And uh, of course, this suggestion that the president would walk hand in hand with his wife uh, and cast a vote was met with roars of laughter. And uh, that was the end of it. Uh, but you have to keep trying. And role models, if a president in a country sets an example and uh, puts his uh, wife or a woman, a working woman, uh, where she is valued and where she belongs, this is enormously important. Another role model I saw yesterday, the governor of Hiroshima uh, has uh, taken extra childcare leave. I read in the newspapers. And uh, I think this is an important signal. There will now be men, I suppose, in the prefecture of Hiroshima who will follow his example. There will be women who say, listen, he's taking more childcare uh, off, why don't you? This is a role model. Men with power who set the example is very important. A last example I might mention, I read also, there are Ned Nadeshiko, I'm not sure I pronounce it correctly, Nadeshiko shares, shares in companies that have gender equality as a fundamental value in the, in the company. This is important, uh, and I understand that the Tokyo Stock Exchange, you can actually invest in companies if you know that gender equal, uh, equality 
and uh, uh, the position of women is fundamental to their company. And I think th that is an important signal. You know, the enormous uh, success that uh, sustainable funding investment has had in the West. If you uh, have corporations that uh, put sustainable uh, development at the core uh, of their uh, company strategy, you have people who invest in those companies only because sustainability is important, because they believe in sustainability. And if housewives in any country have an influence on investment uh, of the household, you should be able to tell them if you invest in these companies, in these stocks, in these funds, you will be investing in companies that put gender equality high on the agenda. And I think these are important signals. So much can be done, but I think to end, uh, the message is clear. I think uh, no one would deny the fact that men run this world. So if you want to really accelerate this gender equality issue as a win-win situation, uh, I'm not saying this is something that should be done just for the sake of it. Everyone wins. Uh, I think attitudes of men should change and they should provide the facilities for women to pursue the, their life as they want. Thank you very much indeed.